What's up YouTube, Stu Dog here, so tonight I'm going to be doing my review over the 2016 Yu-Gi-Oh! North American WCQ, so this was a very interesting event to witness. I was watching the Twitch streams, and of course, Konami finds a way to F it up, every time guaranteed. I was looking forward to the finals, and guess what, we finally get to the finals, they don't even show it. And on top of that, they don't show the finals of the well the semi-finals or the finals of the dragon duels which i mean not a lot of people care about the dragon duels but i know back in 2014 they actually showed the finals of the dragon duels they showed the finals of the actual match i know last year they showed the finals i mean pretty much every year since kunami started streaming they at least show the finals because that's the match everyone wants to see but i mean it was just pathetic how they literally you waited all that time to try to s watch the finals in the feature match and they didn't even show it they just ended the stream after like the top four or something it was just stupid but <sighs> whatever i'm pretty much done ranting this was an interesting event it's well it had a whole bunch of players over 2200 i think it was the most populated nationals in north america in the past five years honestly i'm not surprised at all a lot of people were surprised by this but i mean basically you got to book your hotel months in advance i know everyone was like oh let's just not go to this event and boycott Konami for like taking down Dian or something. But I mean, if you get your invite, you basically have to book your hotel like a month in advance. So I mean, what, you're just going to not go to the Nationals just to like boycott Konami? Like no one's actually going to do that. And plus Pittsburgh is in a very, you know, populated area. It's close to Philly. It's close to New York. It's close to, you know, Ohio and Columbus and Baltimore. I mean, Pittsburgh, it's just, there's a lot of big cities by it that aren't, like, a painful drive. I mean, back in 2014 in Detroit, I heard a lot of people say that they're purposely not going to go to that Nationals because they think Detroit's a, a bad city <laughs> or a dangerous city. And, you know, Nashville, Nashville's just a random city last year. So, I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised at all that this event got a whole lot of players. I mean, there's a lot of cheap meta decks right now. I mean, Dante's were like $60, $70 a year ago. Dante's are like $2 now. Monarchs are a very cheap deck. And even, ah, uh, what's that? Uh, even Cosmos aren't really that expensive thanks to the premium gold, infinite gold. So, I mean, there's three big reasons why, you know, this event got so many players. I mean, this, the cheap meta bet decks and, you know, Pittsburgh being in a very populated area close to a lot of big ma major cities. It's not like Nashville or Detroit where people were like, oh, it's such a dangerous city, I'm not going to go there. But uh, anyway, I'm pretty much just ranting now. But anyway, going on to what top, the top 64, yeah, just a lot of meta stuff. I don't really want to go over or spend too much time going over this, but you know, 21 PK Fire, 13 Extra Deck Monarchs, 6 Domain Monarchs, a grand total of what, 21 Monarchs, I believe? Or... Er, Am I doing that math wrong? No, 19 Monarchs. God dang it. Can't do simple mathematics, of course. So, 19 Monarchs, 21 PK Fire. So, these were definitely your two most represented decks. Six Domain Monarchs. That's actually a big shocker. The last way CS, there was, like, no Domain Monarchs that topped. And, you know, that's easily the reason why um, this deck, or Domain Monarchs, did so well at this event. Because... Not a lot of people were playtesting against it. It was just a sneaker deck because it bricks a lot of not a lot of people in playing it. All the quote unquote pros like Patrick Hoban and everyone who's been topping the ARG circuits has been playing the extra deck monarchs and they say, Oh, Domain Monarch is garbage, it bricks and it's stupid, don't play Domain Monarchs, but I mean it just sneaks in there and it just gets the the victories in six spots in top sixty four and four spots in the top thirty two is definitely very good for Domain Monarchs. Just a very cheap deck, and I was surprised that it actually did so well. And, you know, I'm just going to spoil it now. Yep, it did indeed win the YCS. This reminds me so much of 2012 and Windups won. Oh, my God. I mean, Windups, they were a very meta deck when they first came out. Same thing with Domain Monarchs. They were a very meta deck when they first came out. And then after a while, people were like, nah, Domain Monarchs are trash. And then people stopped playing Windups in 2012 because Dino Rabbit and Chaos Dragons were the new best thing. So basically, Domain Monarchs were under the radar, Windups were under the radar, and then they sneak in, come out of nowhere, and just get the the clutch victory. It was just It reminds me so much of 2012, what Domain Monarchs did here. Just hilarious. And it's a very cheap deck, too. Like, so cheap. Like, $50 at the most. 
Because, I mean, the three structure decks, that's $30. And then the two Karaz and, like, some other random side deck cards. You don't even need an extra deck. Just a very cheap deck. The, probably the cheapest deck ever to actually win a Nationals. Just hilarious. <laughs> Going on to some of the other stuff that topped. Yeah, we had Pendulum.dex. We got Performal Pals and Odd Eyes Magicians. Stuff along these lines. A solid seven Odd Eyes decks and six Performal Pal decks topping. So, I mean, congratulations. <laughs> Cosmos, of course, getting in there. We got six Cosmos. Five of them were playing the Card of Demise, of course. One random Fire King Cosmo. Other rogue decks like Klee, Card of Demise, Stun. Got one random Top, top 64 Top. And then Magi Spectre Magicians got two random Tops. So basically everything I thought was going to top was going to go in here. The one random deck that... No one really expected was Cyframes. Yes, I do not own a Cyframe card, but that was pretty interesting to see Cyframes get top 64. I mean, out of 2,000, I mean, 12 rounds of Swiss and out of 2,000 plus players, a Cyframe deck getting top 64. I mean, one big props to the guy for actually playing Cyframes at Nationals. I mean, you gotta have a lot of guts to do that. And then two, I mean, big props for him actually topping with Cyframes. I mean, yeah, he didn't get top 32, but I mean, still, top 64 at a 12 round tournament. Out of like 2,000 plus players is definitely very, very good. So congrats to the Cyframe player. <laughs> Even though it's kind of like a D-bag deck. But I mean, hey, at least it's not meta, man. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. The top eight consisted of no Pendulum. Basically, I think it was five PK Fire, four Monarchs, and then one random Cosmos. This was your top eight. The finals, it was PK Fire versus Domain Monarchs, and in the end, Domain Monarchs just get the clutch victory, because, you know, PK Fire winning two YCSs in a row, almost won their third premier event in a row, it was definitely the most feared deck, and no one's really been playing um, Domain Monarchs, especially on DN, I haven't been seeing that many people play Domain Monarchs, well, back when DN was still working, and, you know, how all the high-caliber players like Patrick Hoban saying Domain Monarchs trash, and he always plays Extra Deck Monarchs, and basically, like, the past two YCSs, only one Domain Monarch topping. It's just crazy how it just sneaks in here and gets that clutch victory, just like Windups did in 2012, so. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this event. I mean, the streaming was very nice for the coverage that we did have. I wish they would have done the finals. That would have been pretty fun to watch. I wish that the chat wasn't so cancerous, I guess. How uh, you literally couldn't talk about anything without Moobot timing you out or getting banned or something, which was just annoying. But, I mean, whatever. So, in the end, this will be your championship deck. <laughs> For the time being, until people actually side against it. But I mean, I believe it was just a surprise factor that made Domain Monarchs do so well at this event. I didn't want this video to go on too long, but in the end, here it is. I believe his name was what? Eric Christensen? Um, big shout out to Eric Christensen for winning 2016 Nationals. It is quite an accomplishment. And hopefully you can go to Worlds and bring home USA's first Worlds win ever. Yes, USA USA has still never won Yu-Gi-Oh! Worlds ever. Closest we gotten was Canada. But uh thank you all for watching this video as always, and until next time, this is Stew Dog, and I'm signing out.